Back at CES 2019, we watched as Hyundai explained their vision of a connected future for transport. They weren't alone. Pretty much every automaker and potential automaker has described how in this upcoming sci-fi utopia, we'll be living an ultra-connected life with transport that we can summon and control with our gestures and our voice, and that the transport of the future will be AI and machine learning driven, and that we'll anticipate our every need it's the sort of thing envisioned by countless futuristic films, with cars appearing at our whim and disappearing off afterwards to serve others. And to some extent, that's probably the truth. At least, part of it. Shared transport, along with public transit and some form of privately owned private transport, will probably be the way we get around for the foreseeable future. That, and of course, a little bit of Shanks Pony. But with increasing numbers of people who either choose to be carless or who are unable to afford a car, the rise of car sharing services like Lyft and Uber, and the greater expense to most legacy automakers of producing EVs, manufacturers have a problem. Yes, at the moment EVs sell for more money than traditional vehicles, but consumers are demanding cheaper cars, just as they have always done. And those cheaper EVs come with two challenges, as the automakers see them less of a need for after-sales service, and much longer lifespans. Yes, current battery packs do wear out, and it's likely that even with massive advances, they'll continue to need replacing as new cars become older cars. But that drip-feed cash supply of new oil filters, spark plugs, brake pads and such, that's gradually going away. So automakers are looking for alternative ways to monetize the vehicles they sell, to gain added value to them from you. Like Facebook, if you're not paying for it, you're the product. When we talk about EV pricing, we often talk about reaching the average price for a new car. In the US, that's around $33,000. But that includes luxury cars, which skews those numbers towards the kind of cars a lot of us just can't afford. Cole Cannon Business Consulting looked at the median price, that is the most common price for new cars in the United States, and came up with a figure closer to $23,000. So to lop off that $10,000 and bring the price of new electric vehicles in line with the median price rather than the average is going to require that either component prices drop like a lead balloon or automakers find a way to make up that shortfall. And they're looking at the tech market, at companies like Google and Facebook and Twitter, and they're seeing that the data your car gathers is worth something. And Hyundai were the most open about that. They have been collecting metadata. Where you go, when you go how fast you go. All of that is metadata, and Hyundai said they have zettabytes of it. Each zettabyte is one billion terabytes. All of that is compiled and waiting for analysis. And there's been a lot of debate about metadata, because companies like to treat it like it's nothing useful, at least when they're talking to the public. But they're well aware it's like gold to advertisers. And that's because when you put together a large amount of metadata, you can tell a lot about a person. Your habits define you. Every morning you stop at Starbucks drive through to get a coffee. Well, rivals like Tim Hortons and Costa would love to know that. Every afternoon you park up at the gym for an hour. Well, I bet Amazon would love to sell you a treadmill. And it can be much more pernicious than that. Your habits change. Let's say you go to see your gynecologist and then a few days later you head to Planned Parenthood. Or you pop by the sexual health clinic. Well, there's going to be a market for that data too. Part of that is because there's an advertising arms race going on. Advertising barely works anyway, and on top of that, we get used to advertising and it stops working almost completely. So anything that can nudge the needle towards a successful sale is pounced on like a vulture. We have got used to targeted advertising, and so roughly targeted advertising is rapidly losing its power, and companies are increasingly keen to lay their hands on more and more granular data about you to try and find that magic connection that will sell to you. And they're willing to pay. On top of that, as automakers add in more and more features, they're increasingly looking to make the car just another living space. Most of our driving time is not spent blatting down country lanes, feeling the thrill of the tyres skipping across tarmac as we push the car around the corner on three wheels. Well, not unless you're Borju Chetinkia. For the rest of us, our drive is spent trundling through traffic jams and down packed city streets, listening to Six Music or NPR, praying for a decent parking space and wondering if the morning meeting might just maybe get cancelled. And automakers are well aware that that kind of low quality driving time, tricky though it is to automate, is exactly the thing that most people won't miss. And they're hoping to sell you things to fill that time. 
But in this intermediate period where we have cars that are now increasingly complex rolling computers, they want you to customize that computer just as you do your smartphone with apps for entertainment, apps for music, apps for extra features, apps for security, and apps for insurance. All of that they can sell you. And then they can charge you for the app, the subscription to keep using it, and then they can charge a supplier for access to you. And then they can extract more customer data to sell to their service providers. Not only are they selling you services, but then they're using the data that they get from those services to sell you more services. This type of data use is called surveillance capitalism. Now, how comfortable you are with that is something only you can decide, and how much privacy you're willing to give up for your convenience is something everyone should consider. Take a moment to think about how much you've given up already. All those terms and conditions you've clicked agree to, that's called notice and consent, and it's deliberately opaque, impossible to actually navigate, and allows companies to more or less strip you for parts. And the Internet of Things is coming to cars, and its notorious insecurity and unreliability is concerning. On top of that, automakers have not got the best track record when it comes to information technology. Show me a connected vehicle app, and I'll show you countless customers complaining that it doesn't work, or leaks data like a sieve, but yet it quickly becomes part of your life in ways you wouldn't really expect. So what would improve the situation? Well, clear opt-ins and opt-outs for the data your car is collecting about you. Clear and transparent policies from automakers on what of your personal data they're going to collect, who they're going to sell it to, and what they're planning to do with it, even if they're anonymizing it. And for those who don't want to share such data, projects like Tor and Ricochet for cars, the only way that's going to happen is if consumers push for it. And where there has been pressure, it has started to have an effect. In Germany, citing Europe's GDPR, Facebook lost in court and has been told they can no longer aggregate data from multiple external apps and websites to track and advertise to users. Germany's Federal Cartel Office said that the user agreement, which effectively amounted to a privacy waiver, was unacceptable because people could not reasonably infer what would happen with all that shared and combined data. Is that a good thing? Do you care if your car acts like Facebook? Do you think that your data being sold is just the cost of existing in the modern world? Do you just love it when your smartphone reminds you to do something you'd forgotten, but it knew from your habits or your search history, and you wish your car could do that too? Let us know what you think in the comments below. That's it for today. We'll be back with more news, analysis, and reviews soon. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and share our videos far and wide. Hit that notification bell below to make sure you know the moment a new show is uploaded. And until next time, keep evolving.